Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to Joyful Living. Today I am bringing you a very special Q&A all about solo travel. I asked for your questions on Instagram and Facebook. Boy, did you guys come through. And the questions fell into three distinct categories. I'm going to tell you what they are and I'm going to do my best to answer your solo travel questions. And let's get right into it. So I'm really glad that you're here. If you're new, I'm Jen. I talk about all things home, travel, fitness, over 50. And on my other channel, I talk a lot about Disney, but here we talk about just kind of general travel hacks and tips. And I feel very qualified to talk about a very few things in my life, but this happens to be one of those things. As the daughter of an airline pilot and now the wife of an airline pilot, and also someone who has traveled solo so many times that I tried to add it up and I actually couldn't so many, many times. I've traveled domestically, I've traveled internationally, London, Paris, all over the United States, and I'm super excited to share this video with you today because I think solo travel, especially for women, has a lot of um, bad press. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I was kind of curious as to what your questions were for me, and I love it because on Instagram, it doesn't, uh, you know, you can't see what everybody else is asking, but with very few exceptions, Every single question fell into one of three categories. Safety, feeling awkward when you travel, specifically about dining alone, and then about how do you not feel guilty for both spending time away from your family and also for spending family resources for your own individual travel. So I'm going to start with the safety piece because I think this is the one that had probably the most questions and I feel like this is an area where a lot of women in particular work it up into their heads as to be this really, really scary big thing if they're gonna travel by themselves. And I won't sugarcoat it. Um, yes, there are moments when I have felt anxious when I've traveled, but I felt like um, this was the, the question that came in that basically was the same as all the other questions about safety. What are some tips and tricks other female solo travelers can use to stay safe? So I wanna introduce this section first by sharing that eight out of 10 cases of assault are um, by someone that the victim knows. This is a very, very sad statistic, but it also is a stark reminder that as you're out traveling as a solo traveler, being um, assaulted by a complete stranger is actually still relatively rare. I feel like if you ever read the book Freakonomics, uh, this applies really well to that. We have this perception that by traveling solo, we're taking this huge increased risk, but the reality is that random acts of violence still are very rare, especially in the places that I travel to. And if you follow some basic safety tips, you're basically just as safe as you are by going to your local Costco, traveling out in your normal everyday life. And although you need to be aware, this is not something you need to be paranoid about. Look at the statistics, be aware of the statistics for the area that you're visiting, and be smart. Okay, so what does be smart look like? For me, being smart looks like making sure I have all my sticks in a stack, all my paperwork is in order, that I'm prepared if something should happen, like I lose my passport, I lose my driver's license. There are some very specific things that I mentioned in a video I did a while back that I'll go ahead and put a link to here because I'm pretty sure it's still relevant, but I will do things like uh, make a photocopy of my driver's license and passport and store those in the hotel safe. I will also print out uh, phone numbers, the name of my hotel, uh, phone number for the local embassy, things like that. And I will have that printed in case I should lose my phone, in case I should leave my phone somewhere. You know, we all keep so much in our phone now, but then you think, what would happen if I lost my phone? And I have a story that I won't share for the 15th time, but long story short, uh, my phone died and my battery backup was not working when I was in Paris. So my phone was just not an option. And that was when I started doing kind of these backup plans for, you know, what if I should lose my phone? And as long as we're speaking about phones, another great tip that I like is don't ever stop in a crowded street in public and look down at your phone specifically 
specifically for directions. What I like to do is wear my headphones or one earbud and I listen to turn by turn directions in my ear. This is particularly helpful in big cities like London and Paris. There are some great apps. City Mapper is my favorite for international travel that will give you turn by turn directions and you'll hear it right in your headphones because nothing says I'm a tourist and I don't know where I am more than stopping in the middle of a busy street and looking down at your phone. You want to make sure you're not doing things to make yourself a target. If you do need to look down at your phone, stop into a cafe, stop into a shop, stop into a, you know, a crowded place where there's a lot of people around and you would feel a little bit more safe. You don't want to do anything that will draw attention to you as a solo traveler. A lot of you asked me about hotels and do I have a preference? Yes, I do. I much prefer to be booked at a hotel with interior corridors as opposed to exterior corridors. So think like a motel style. If you're going to Disney, think about a place like Old Key West and I adore Old Key West, but because it's set up like a condo, um, one way that women can be victims of random crime and really anyone can be is if you're by yourself and someone could actually push you into your hotel room. This is obviously far less likely to happen if you are in a hotel room where you have to enter the building first before you get to your room and there are interior hallways. Having said that, I have stayed solo in exterior hallway rooms many times. It's just that I'm extra cautious to look around and make sure there is no one watching me before I quickly go into my room, close the door and click that little lock and I am safely inside. Also, when you get to a city, if you're not familiar with it, check with the hotel staff. Um, as a runner and a walker, I really like to go out for my morning exercise and I find the hotel staff can make fantastic recommendations for places in the area that are safe for runners and walkers. And then overall, just be aware. Be aware of your surroundings. You know, the thing we tell teenage girls now and college age girls and boys, don't leave your drink unattended. Don't leave your food unattended. Um, if you are dining alone, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, and you need to get up in the middle of your meal to use the restroom, finish the drink you're on or, or set it aside and don't drink it again. These are just, you know, very normal things that we tend to tell our children, but sometimes we forget ourselves. Also, I always put Scott's name on my hotel reservations. It is nobody's business that I am traveling by myself and I don't need to um, you know, there's no need to take that unnecessary risk. So I always make sure that my husband is also on all of my reservations. And then lastly, have a little bit of a white lie cover story. I only pull these out when I find myself in a very uncomfortable situation, but if someone is being particularly nosy or asking questions and you can, you just get that sixth sense, which you always want to listen to, by the way, you can kind of feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Uh, great cover stories include I'm meeting my husband here in 10 minutes. Uh, great cover stories include I'm actually here for work and I'm meeting a bunch of work friends. I need to go. Anything that is an exit strategy for you that says I am with people that will be looking out for me. Very rarely will I share that I'm sailing or traveling completely by myself. And I said sailing because that would be the one exception. If I'm on a cruise, it's pretty obvious that I'm sailing by myself, but I do feel that a cruise is inherently slightly safer because of all the process everyone has had to go through to get on board. And even then, I don't share that unless and until I feel comfortable with the people that I'm talking to. So use the same general safety tips that you would use in your daily life be smart, be prepared, understand that when you're not traveling with a companion, you're the one who has to think about everything and going back to the having backups of driver's license and passport and phone numbers and things like that. You don't have someone else with a phone. You don't have someone else with, you know, the hotel information, all of those things. So you do have to be chief cook and bottle washer for your own trip, which means you've just got to be aware of what's going on around you. And if you do all those things, and if you travel to predominantly safe areas, I feel like you can have a fabulous solo trip, whether that be here in the U.S., internationally, on a cruise ship, wherever you might choose to go. Now, the next category we're going to get into is guilt. 
I was shocked how many of you shared that you cannot get past the guilt of traveling solo. Some of you shared it was because you felt bad leaving your family behind. Some of you shared it was because you felt bad spending family money for something that was only for you. And um, this was the question that kind of summarized all of it. How do you get past the guilt of leaving others behind and spending the money just on you? Now, I don't like to paint all women and all mothers with the same brush. But I would say that by and large, women tend to make a lot of the sacrifices that keep their families going. Sacrifices of time, sacrifices of money, sacrifices of sleep and mental energy. We just seem to be the ones that always are the first to show up to say, I'll do that so that you don't have to, or I won't buy this thing for myself so that you can have this thing for yourself. And I'll say here what I said on Instagram, unless this money is going to keep you from being able to pay your mortgage, or if your children don't have shoes, or if, for instance, you and your spouse are fighting about it a lot, I don't love that. But if you are in a supportive marriage and your spouse is all for it, and if your children can be well cared for while you're gone, I don't want you to feel any guilt at all for taking your own adventures and taking time for yourself. In fact, as an Enneagram too, I can tell you that actually uh, taking time for you in a um, very clear way is doing something for the people that you love because you're taking time for yourself. So you will feel more energized, more encouraging, more able to give them what they need. You burnt out and exhausted is actually not doing your family any favors. And for me, solo travel has always been and continues to be a way to just completely energize how I feel about my life, about my job, about my family. I think there is no greater gift you can give your family than for you to feel energized, rested, and encouraged. And even if it's only a couple of days in a hotel locally by yourself, a lot of you asked when was my first solo trip? And it was when my twins were two and my oldest son was five. And Scott sent me to the Four Seasons locally where we lived in Dallas. And I just spent two nights basically ordering room service, laying by the pool. I did a spa treatment and it completely rejuvenated me. And you know what? I had no guilt at all. So your children will be fine. It's actually good for them if you go away every once in a while because they learn that the moms go away and the moms come back and it builds in them a confidence and resilience. It's good for your spouse to understand how much you're actually responsible for. It gives them a really good appreciation of who you are if they don't already have that already. And it's fantastic for you because it gives you the ability to be completely rested and rejuvenated, which especially if you have little ones is not something a lot of us have. So I, I think that the guilt needs to go away. I think that if there are people in your life making you feel guilty about this, first of all, if it's your spouse, I think it's probably rarely your spouse. I think it can tend to be mothers or mother-in-laws um, and, and sometimes maybe not so well-meaning friends. But if, if your spouse is supportive of this and you are ready for that break and you are feeling burned out, to me, there is no better way to give to your family than to get out of town for a few days and get yourself rejuvenated. So let go of the guilt. No more guilt. We done with the guilt? Done with the guilt. Okay. And then lastly, the last category was, um, <laughs> really kind of made me laugh because it basically this could be called, isn't it awkward? I, there wasn't really one question that I wanted to pick that said this super clearly, but there were tons of questions that were kind of around this. Don't you feel awkward? Don't you feel weird? Especially when I went on my Disney cruise by myself, you know, when it's all families, does, doesn't that feel odd? And, and all of those other things. And I think I can sum up my answer to this question in, in one saying that I heard Dr. Phil say, but I think it's been around for a really long time. Don't worry what other people think of you because they hardly ever do. And the truth is, when you are out traveling, um, whether this be a resort destination, Disney, uh, London, Paris, people are focused on themselves. Uh, that's just who we are as humans. And I promise you, no one is giving it a second thought. And uh, there, are, everybody was like, don't you feel weird dining alone? 
No, I do not. I actually love dining by myself because I can order whatever I want. Sometimes I'll order, you know, two appetizers and then I'll get dessert. And it's not like I can't order whatever I want when I'm with friends. It's just, there's something very indulgent about it. And I have yet to encounter in all of my solo travel, any wait staff that made me feel weird or awkward about dining alone. It's just not a thing. Even on the cruise ship, I didn't feel this way. And my favorite um, kind of example of how a woman should dine alone is if you've ever seen the movie Last Holiday with Queen Latifah, when she walks into that dining room of the Hotel Poop and she orders all of that lovely food and she is feeling fabulous and she's dressed to the nines and she owns that room. When I start to feel a little insecure, that is who I channel. And I think if they're thinking anything, they're thinking, who is that lucky, amazing woman that gets to dine by herself? And if it helps, you can always take a book to dinner. You know, we all have our phones. You know, if you don't wanna have to be really conspicuous, I happen to love chatting within reason. I have a lot of family members that are servers. Don't, you know, don't monopolize all of the server's time. But I do like chatting with my servers, finding out, you know, a little bit about the local area, maybe where they're from, things like that. And it it is honestly one of my favorite parts of solo travel. I have dined in some of the nicest restaurants I've ever been in by myself, and I loved it every single minute. Now, as far as feeling awkward other places, I mean, I think again, this is something that is more of a perception than a reality. And if you think about the last time you traveled, were you like scanning the dining room or, you know, if you were getting on a cruise ship, were you scanning the crowd? And if you saw a solo traveler, were you like, oh, yikes, I'm glad I'm not her. Probably not. Probably you were thinking, wow, that's amazing. How cool that she's doing that. So um, kind of don't let yourself get wrapped up in the court of public opinion about what it means to travel alone. It's fabulous. I love it. I will continue to travel alone. Do I still love traveling with my family? Yes. In fact, we have a very impromptu trip to the beach that we're doing uh, coming up here in a few days. And one of our kids is going and it's going to be wonderful. But traveling alone is liberating. It is fulfilling. It is joyful. And it fills me up like not a lot of other things in my life do. And especially right now, couldn't we all use a little bit more of that? I'm gonna go with yes. Okay, thanks you guys for your questions. Thanks for being so like totally obvious about what you really needed to hear from me today. If you have thought about traveling alone and you're feeling insecure, you need to go for it. And I want you to comment below where you wanna go and when you're going, because let's get those trips booked, right? If there was ever a time where we need a little infusion of joy, it's right now. So whatever you're doing, I hope you're finding joy. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a big thumbs up. And I do not do sponsored videos. So if you'd like to support the work I do here, I would love for you to join us on Patreon. And all the information on how to do that will be down in the description box below. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Happy solo traveling. Bye.